Hey you guys, Peacemaker with your daily bread here. <laughs> Marriage is what brings us together today. <laughs> so real quick and easy. Um, I am not a Mormon and Mormons believe that um, there will be marriage in heaven. I'm not positive I disagree with the statement or that I agree with the Mormons, but let's, I, I've seen a lot of sloppy exegesis on the actual topic. So eisegesis in Greek means when we are reading what we think into the text. Okay. Exegesis is when we're taking what the text says and trying to derive it for ourselves. Okay. Just a little precursor on your daily her hermeneutics. <laughs> so really quick, I just wanted to go through a couple passages and just be like, okay, guys, let's read them real careful and not say what they don't say and say what they say. Right. So we heard that principle already. <clears throat> Let me flip you. Okay, guys. So, this is usually the passage in question. Matthew 23, verse 30. It says, For in the resurrection they ne neither marry, yeah, neither, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like the angel are like angels of God in heaven. Okay, and there's a parallel there of Mark 20, 12, 25, Luke 20, 35. If you want my notes for today, we uh, you can probably grab them from that. <clears throat> and then um, Luke 20, 35 as well. So there's a couple of uh, parallels, guys. What does it say, though? Does it say for two people who have loved the, each other and had themselves as husband and wife, when they get to heaven, they don't have a marriage anymore? Is that what it says? Because it says, for in the resurrection, they neither what? They neither marry nor are given a marriage. So marriage as an institution is not going to be furthered, right? In the resurrection. Okay. Does that mean that every marriage that ever was is annulled? You'd have a very hard time for me not not creating the negative inference fallacy there, which is to take something that says like this: they don't marry in heaven. I mean, in uh, the resurrection, but are like angels of God in heaven. To mean that, therefore, there is no. The opposite, right? So therefore, you know, uh, marriage is truly annulled or being married is no longer a thing. That's a logical leap. And I'm not sure I'm down with that. And I know it becomes really hard as far as like adultery and some other things or even second or third husbands and wives. But let's talk about that for a minute, right? So I'll hop over this next slide or this next bunch of uh, verses. So first off, Deuteronomy says, <clears throat> when a man takes his wife, takes a wife to marry her, and it happens that she finds no favor in his eyes, but he has found some uncleanness in her, and writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand, and sends her out of the house. So it starts. You know, like, let's, let's keep reading then. Out of her, out of his house. Full chapter. <clears throat> When she has departed from his house and goes and becomes another man's wife, if the latter husband detests her and writes her a certificate of divorce, puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house, or if the latter husband dies, who took her as a wife, then her former husband who divorced her must not take her back to be his wife after she has been defiled. This is an abomination before the Lord, and you shall not bring sin on the land in which the Lord your God has given you. As an inheritance. <clears throat> so, in context, Deuteronomy 24 is saying you can't just go back like nothing ever happened to your wife because you divorced her and you're an idiot, right? Um, and if she was married to somebody else and they die or they have, you know, put her out, 
still don't go back because that's apparently abomination before the Lord. I say it's kind of gross and disgusting too to me. I'd be like, you know, if you it didn't work the first time, there are some times when you go and reconcile, but um, it's very rare in my opinion. But we know Jesus said this was given by Moses because they had a hard heart, right? So that's, let's see if I can find that. Um, Moses allowed Okay. But because of the hardness well all right so we're down here in <clears throat> verse i should have known that matthew chapter 19 um sorry guys i'm just writing it down real quick eight and nine okay because of the hardness of your right hearts, he wrote you this precept. 5 and 12. <clears throat> he said that Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, permitted you to divorce your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. So even in Matthew chapter 19 here, we see Jesus doing a few things. And it's always, but from the beginning, it was not so. So he points back to the beginning and says, you're off. You're not right. Right? Your heart's wrong. Everything about you is wrong. You shouldn't be looking for reasons to get rid of your wife. You should be looking for reasons to stay committed all the time with your wife and to keep the relationship alive. <clears throat> I like how he had to rebuke his disciples after they... After he showed up, apparently. Sorry, I just was reading this one as well. Um, so hardness of heart's an interesting thing, ain't it? <clears throat> um, if they wanted to say that the angels are being like the angels in heaven is a passage indicative of um, no sex or no marriage in heaven, I would just interestingly come over here and tell them something about... Where is it? Yeah, we're still working on that. Really quickly, I'll just do this one because we can close it out. Genesis 6 says, Now it came to pass when the men began to multiply on the face of the earth, daughters were born to them, and the sons of God, Benecha Elohim, in Hebrew, the sons of God, which are angels, saw the daughters of men that they were beautiful, and they took their themselves took wives for themselves. All whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive for man with man forever, for he is flesh. Indeed, he is, he is indeed flesh. And his days will be 120 years. And there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, the sons of God, B'nai Ha Elohim, came into the daughters of men and bore children to them. And they bore children to them. They were mighty men of old, men of renown, and the Lord saw that the wickedness of the man, of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of their thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. Look, folks, I don't think we've gotten to that point where every thought of, of the heart was evil only continually. Only evil continually. Something drastically bad happened here, and this is why the flood came. And it's not only just a mixing of kinds, B'nai Chal Elohim, with the daughters of men. It is definitely <clears throat> not kissing cousins. Because they're gigantes in the, in the Greek, or giants, right? So that, unfortunately, means not kissing cousins. You don't get big 18-footers like Og of Bashan uh, from kissing cousins. So we'll finish out the last thought as well about the what what about the people who who are married multiple times, kind of like the Sadducees were asking Jesus. First off, if you find yourself in the seat of the Sadducees, I'd be careful. Okay. Um, so let me just 
throw a couple of passages up because I don't remember what I done did. Um, oh, wait a minute. Maybe it's... Uh, Because we're going to talk a little bit about adultery. Oh, that's not how you spell adultery, apparently. Uh huh? I'm crazy as heck. What is going on here? Mm -hmm. You should not commit adultery. Yeah, I don't have things. So, yeah, apparently the Bible is definitely against the idea of adultery. <clears throat> hmm. Let's see if we've got. There we go. So Jesus also has <clears throat> right here in Mark ten eleven is one of them. So he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. Interestingly enough, <clears throat> um, I think that's Jesus' view, right? From the beginning, it was not so. One man, one woman, one lifetime, forever, is what it seems to imply. And anything outside of that, whether for temporal reasons like marriage would have been, or or whatnot, to you know, to sustain a, a woman and her household and whatnot, um, just the way society was back then, or whatever else, it doesn't seem to be God's design and want right now i'm perfectly fine personally and that's kind of well, let me put up romans as well <clears throat> romans 7 3 if you want to check it out it's kind of paul saying something he's a good pharisee you know romans 7 3 said uh so if while her husband lives, she marries another man she would be called an adulteress but if her husband dies she's free from that law so there, that so that there is no adulteress. She is no adulteress. Excuse me, though she has married another man. So I don't think Paul and Jesus are contradicting each other. I think that with Paul's understanding of the law, as well as the society and things that were back in those days as well. I'm not saying it's a context for them only, but. <clears throat> Divorce was more devastating back then, especially for women, um, because that was your livelihood, not just your, um, not just like your husband or whatever, leaving your family. So, or you leaving him, really. So, I mean, typically you'd go back to your dad. Um, it's just, it's heartbreaking, right? God hates divorce. Let's first off say that. So let's say what he does say and not say what he doesn't say, okay? I guess in Matthew chapter 19, there's a, there's, there's God wants you to marry someone and to completely devote and give yourself to them for the rest of your life and to your eternity, I believe as well. That if you are married <clears throat> on earth, you will be married in heaven. Will you have time for sexual encounters or anything? God only knows. I don't necessarily see... It being a bad thing, and I think a lot of Christians are <gasps> about sex, so I think that's the other problem. Um, we can't even seem to be genuine to the world long enough to be <laughs> um, to talk about these things. But I'll I'll end I'll end with Jesus's quote to the Pharisees: "You don't understand the Scriptures or the Son or the power of God." He's saying you don't understand. He's he's telling them, by the way, that they're trying to get a roundabout way of telling him there's no resurrection. He's telling them, no, you're stupid. I'm about to resurrect, so you can piss off. Uh, sorry about the language, I guess. I should probably not use those words, but... That's what Jesus basically tells these Sadducees, is that they don't understand what they're talking about. They just don't. He's just rebuking them. He's just straight telling them no. So to take that... <clears throat> <clears throat> passage and apply it to making the like I said the negative inference fallacy basically um, to say there is no marriage in heaven there is no sex in heaven there is nothing that which by the way heaven comes here and we get a new heaven and a new earth and if that's all the truth then 
you know, I mean, God's good. So I don't see what the problem is with people who are resurrected. Even the angels, right? They they were able to come down and they were able to leave their first estate, the Nephilim, right? And to uh, commit sin against God. They didn't not didn't have ambiguous or less, you know, nothing genitalia, you know. So just a thought. Um, hopefully that wasn't too vulgar or weird, but I just think that there's marriage in heaven. Like if I, for instance, my brother and best friend, we'll say, um, and his wife, you know, I don't foresee them being apart in heaven. I don't see them, and it's not because we're not worshiping Jesus or doing as well, right? I think that that's a great sign and an amazing, miraculous one at that. Um, that's what Paul seems to say. But anyway, I've gone too long, guys. 15 minutes. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm going to try to keep them under 10-ish or less. So anyway, guys, that was just kind of what was on my heart. Mewage. <laughs> Um, God bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you his peace.